Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, uh, as Guru Maharaj is continuing his classes on Chaitan Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, Pure Devotional Service, Chapter 22. So we will continue today, verse 43. So Guru Maharaj, I will share uh, this verse now. Okay. Let's see here. Um, This is Madhya Leela, chapter 22, verse number 43. And this is uh, the science of devotional service. And we've been continuing, we're discussing the different features of devotional service, mixed devotional service, what is not devotional service, what looks like devotional service, what um, are some of the ornaments of devotional service, what are the lesser principles by which devotional service develops? So there's many different categories in this main category of pure devotional service. So we'll continue. Samsara Brahmati Kona, Bhagya Ke Hatara, Nadire Prahlahe Yena, Kastalagatire. This verse we did yesterday, yeah. I remember doing the verse yesterday. 44, okay. Maiva mama dam syas yapi swar eva chuta darshanam riddhyamanam kaladadya kachitarati kaschina. Because I'm so fallen, I shall never get a chance to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This was my false apprehension. Rather, by chance a person as fallen as I may get to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead, although one is being carried away by the ways of the river of time, one may eventually reach the shore. This is from the Srimad Bhagavatam. 1038.5, spoken by Akura. Next verse. Kona Bhagga Kala Samsara Shaya Mukha Hoya Sarasangi Tava Krishna Rati Upajaya by good fortune, one becomes eligible to cross the ocean of nations. And once one's term of material existence decreases, one may get an opportunity to associate with pure devotees. By such association, one attraction to Krishna is awakened. Purport. Srila Bhakti Thakur explains this point in this word, bhogya, fortunate, the result of an accident or something else. Is this fortune the result of an accident or something else? And the scriptures, devotional service and pious activity are considered fortunate. Pious activities can be divided into three categories. Pious activities that awaken one's dormant Krishna consciousness, 
are called Bhakti Un Yunmukti Sukriti. Pious activities that bestow material opulences are called Boga Mukti Sukriti. And pious activities that enable the living entity to merge into the existence of the Supreme are called Moksha Mukti Sukriti. The la these last two awards of pious activities are not actually fortunate. Pious activities are fortunate when they help one become Krishna conscious. The good fortune of bhakti umukhi is attainable only when one comes in contact with the devotee. By association with the devotee willingly or unwillingly, one advances in devotional service and thus one's dormant Krishna consciousness is awakened. Om-vijyantinadam-dasya-gyanajana-salakaya-chaksum-marikam-yenatasmai-shri-gurave-maha-tumma-om-vishnu-padaya-krishna-prasthaya-bhutalai-shri-mapti-bhakti-vedanta-
and, and one has to reach the platform of goodness. And then that platform of goodness, then one is enlightened in how best to serve. And then one takes shelter of one's bona fide spiritual master that engages in devotional service. So here, as it mentions, if one comes in contact with an opportunity to associate with a pure devotee, and then by that association, one's attraction to Krishna is awake, awakened. So we might, we might say, get, get attracted to those who are attracted to Krishna. That is the key or the uh, fortunate stage of one's development <clears throat> towards the goal of life. Uh, one should seek out the associations of such persons. One should render service to such persons. One should hear from such persons. And one should inquire from such persons into the goal of life. And one should be ready to offer seva at any particular time. So this is the actual association with uh, Krishna's pure representative. So therefore, there, this verse is kind of weaving a little bit of a pattern pattern is that by pious activities one becomes fortunate and by development of a certain amount of pious activities one awakens their desire for Krishna. When one awakens their desire for Krishna then Krishna sends the bona fide spiritual master and one's good fortune is in place. Now one has to take advantage of a good fortune. Just like if you have money, but you simply put it in the bank and you don't use it, and you have no intention to use it, then it's good, it's just as good as not having it. Because something of value becomes uh, uh, is understood by its use, how to use it. It's like we receive transcendental knowledge, but then again, the receiving is beneficial, but the actual application of the knowledge in a practical way is our good fortune or is the, the, the proper use of this knowledge. So in the same way, one has to take advantage of the spiritual master by seeking out association, by trying to hear, by asking questions, by getting doubts removed. And that way one will uh, continue to make progress in devotional service. And the Bhagavad Gita in the fourth chapter at the very end of the fourth chapter, Krishna talks about persons who are uh, unfortunate. Um, they, uh, let me think of that particular verse. Um, you wanna to go to that verse, it's uh, fourth chapter, Bhagavad Gita text number 39, I believe it is. It's an interesting verse. Yeah, uh, a faithful man who is deadly. No, no, it's verse number 40, I think. Let's see. Yeah, ignorant, but ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain God consciousness. They fall down for the doubting soul. There is happiness neither in this world nor the next. So you have three categories here. Those who are ignorant, those who are faithless, 
and those who doubt the scriptures. These three never attain to God consciousness. Now, as it's explained, the ignorant can be enlightened and the faithless can develop faith. But those who have doubt in the, in the revealed scriptures, unless that doubt is removed, they make, as it says here, they make no progress at all. So therefore doubting or not, or not understanding how to apply that knowledge will uh, st st cause one to vacillate or we might say one causes one to fail to make progress in devotional service. So as, as Krishna says here, the doubting soul, there is happiness neither in this world nor in the next. So you see out of the three, two are, they have a chance for rectification, but the doubting soul, they do not have any chance. So if there's any doubt, now sometimes devotees have doubts in different categories of doubts. One, they doubt the process. They doubt the knowledge that's been given to them or they doubt their ability to successfully execute the process. Sometimes they, the voice say, well, yeah, I don't have any, I, I know the process works, but I, I, I can't do it. I'm too formal. Uh, I can see in my attempts to become Krishna consciousness, um, I'm not like others who are more advanced and have greater knowledge, have greater memories more enthusiastic it's just they doubt their own ability to make progress or to come up to the standard now that is not wrong but if they doubt krishna one may say well i can't do it i know i can't but krishna can do it and krishna can give me what I need to become successful in my execution of devotional service. And he does that through the spiritual master. So, Pari Prashyena Sevaya Upadeksyanti Te Gyanam Gyaninas Tattva Darshana. One should regularly place questions before the qualified devotee in order to get the answers. Once the answers, then we can understand how to apply that. But if we remain doubtful, then as it says here, there's no happiness in this world for the doubting soul or in the next world. So um, the word Madhusuda is the name of a demon. And that demon was killed by Krishna. Uh, and so that demon is the demon of doubt. <laughs> so doubts are compared to demons, which block. So if we associate with or hear from the wrong sources or the sources that have, that are materialistic or against the process of devotional service, we may develop doubts. And if we develop doubts and they're not rectified or they're not destroyed, then those doubts will grow and they will block our progress in devotion and service. Like some people say, well, uh, I don't have any doubts in Krishna. I don't have any doubts in the process, but I'm just too fallen. Or I know I can do it, but still I, I doubt that what is being said is actually uh, just, it's just some kind of hyperbole, some overstatement, some exaggeration. So people think that the scripture, just like it says, if one chants, just one name of Krishna, just one name, not even the whole mantra, purely, then one can 
free themselves from all sinful reactions that one could ever possibly commit. That's the power of Krishna's holy name when it's chanted without offense, complete purity in that chanting. So people will say, well, that, that sounds a little bit, you know, like an overstatement. Or as it says, one moment association with a pure devotee can be can remove from all the sinful activities that have been committed for many lifetimes. They may also have that same doubt. So doubting the scriptures, uh, because just like it says, well, you know, uh, Lord Brahma in this universe has four heads, depending on the size of the universe, the Supreme Brahman or Brahma, Lord Brahma, he has so many heads according to how big the universe is. So there are there are Brahmas with 20 heads, 50 heads, 100, 1,000, 10,000, like that. So it goes, it goes unlimited. We might say, well, that's just some eulogy or some nice way to describe things, but it's not true. So the one will doubt or so many, one else may also hear something fantastic, just like people don't believe that the moon is farther away than the sun from the earth. And we believe the scientists, the scientists say, no, the moon is closer. And so we take the words of the materialists over the scriptures. So that doubt has to be removed by inquiring into the nature of the doubt and getting the proper understanding. And there's an answer for every question. As long as the question is a bona fide question, because there are questions that are not bona fide. But there is an answer for all questions, I think. So getting rid of doubts makes one move faster on the process of devotion and service. And keeping doubts means like keeping uh, obstacles. If you want to, just like sometimes uh, a person wants to Oh, I can't I think I'm thinking of different examples. You want, you want to go someplace quickly from the place you are presently are, but instead of planning where to go or how to get there, we simply jump in the car and sometimes we turn on our GPS and we think that's going to be fast. Uh, so we depend on these material things a lot of times. Sometimes the GPS is their own. Sometimes the GPS is take us in a, in a roundabout way getting to the same destination. So uh, yeah, we have faith in the material rather than actually understanding what is the best route to get there and what is the fastest route to get there. We, sometimes we fail to plan accordingly. So in the same way, we have to make sure that our reading of the scriptures are free from any, any doubts, that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that the process of devotional service is, is natural and easy, and one can make progress if simply follows the rules and regulations according to how it's given. So these are the things that one should consider. Like that. And if somehow or other, one is thinking, one is getting the benefits of material uh, luxuries from performing devotional service, that is Krishna's benefit. If one gets material luxuries from pious activities, that is simply due to one's pious activities, but it can and it will, as Prabhupada said, he says, 
we can lead one away from one's best fortune. These are not good fortunate things. But if Krishna gives you material uh, opulences or wealth or facilities or whatever ma material arrangements, these things are simply his gifts to his devotees in reciprocation for their devotional service, along with giving himself. He gives both. Although the devotee doesn't ask for anything material, the Krishna automatically gives things. That, and he knows the devotee will not fall down by giving these things. Therefore, he, he gives and the devotee uses them for making further progress in devotional service. Okay, so go back to the, the verse that we were started with. Okay, it's, yeah. so he says, um, even if one associates with a pure devotee accidentally, still, that accidental association can lead one to one's devotional service. For instance, say a pure devotee is walking down the street and he drops something and he's not aware of it. And you come and you pick it up and you go, oh, excuse me, sir, you dropped this. And he said, oh, thank you very much. I really needed this. And uh, so you don't know who he is. You just did a just a natural kind act to another person. But because it's a pure devotee, that will uh, qualify you to become Krishna consciousness in, the, in a later situation. In other words, that will open up the door to more opportunities for association with devotees. So devotional service is very powerful. <laughs> and uh, the association of the saintly souls are the means by which we can uh, make fast progress in devotional service. A lot of times we get stuck in our devotional service and we wonder, why am I stuck? It's because maybe, because, maybe I'm not doing this or maybe I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. And we, a lot of times we just uh, kind of try to figure it out ourselves why we're not making progress. And a lot of times we'll change not knowing what we're changing or why we're changing it. And we feel like this is the, some of the reasons for changing. That's why it's always good to inquire and find out how best to what should I what should I take on in devotional service? What should I get rid of? There was a beautiful prayer by Srila Bhakti Tirtha Swami. In fact, I have the prayer right here in front of me. And the prayer is he made this prayer often and he made it in public and he asked the devotees also. It goes, dear Lord, whatever we need to be better servants for this, for Srila Prabhupada's mission, let it happen or come to us. Whatever we need to have taken away to become pure in Srila Prabhupada's service, let it be taken away. Yeah, so there's a prayer, my dear Lord, I want to make progress, but I'm not sure if I, what else I need. And what else do I have that I don't need? So you, Krishna is like the gardener and he knows how to, he can pick out the weeds and remove the weeds if we allow him to. And therefore these prayers help us to open up greater opportunities for advancement and devotional service by praying for those things which will help us to advance in devotional service. And if we're not sure, then two things that we can say will give us a surety. One is the association of advanced devotees, that we can say for sure. And uh, developing um, 
uh, developing freedom from offenses in our chanting. In other words, removing the offenses to the holy name when we chant the, the holy name. In other words, becoming more attentive in our japa, more devotional in our japa, and associated with the world. These things we can say for sure will bring uh, uh, greater amounts of uh, awareness in how to make advancement in devotional service. Okay, so I'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for nice information on our holy name. Um, may I summarize in brief, Guru Maharaj? Yeah. So, um, uh, pure, uh, like this, uh, pious activities are normally in mode of goodness. And uh, they are of three types, as mentioned, one which awakens Krishna consciousness, uh, second, which gives material opulence, and uh, third, which gives liberation. And uh, fortunate stage for devotee is when they associate with a uh, devotee who is attracted to Krishna and his devotional service, like um, seeking out association of uh, bona fide spiritual master. And also Guru Maharaj mentioned that uh, one may have doubt on his own ability, but uh, that's might be okay, but should not have any doubt on Krishna and his scriptures. And uh, two things he summarized that f one important thing is association of advanced devotee. And uh, second is being more attractive, uh, sorry, being more attentive and removing offenses to holy name while we do the japa. So the other two things which devotee should really be careful about. So okay. Yeah, and one one should think. Well, I can't. I have the. I don't have the ability or the intelligence or the power to make advancement. But Krishna does. So if I connect to Krishna, there's my there's my success. So it's not that we can't make an advancement, but we know it all depends on how much we're connected to Krishna. And connected to hit the process of devotional service. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, DJ devotees. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or realization, you can unmute yourself and also as Guru Maharaj say, you can please switch on your video now. Uh, this is a time to have a uh, good association with Guru Maharaj through your video. Uh, Guru Maharaj, while uh, we get any question, I have got one question from Narsinga Lila Mataji. Uh, she is saying sometimes devotee, this is in the chat, sometimes devotee distribute prasadam to non-devotees without renam or anything like that uh, during COVID protest in Croatia. I have heard from some devotee that activity is almost useless if there is no harinam or any kind of holy name distributed together with prasadam. Can you please shed some light on that statement? How do you understand it? Is it just pious activity or devotional service, or can we both depend? Can we both depending on one's intention? Yeah, mm -hmm. distributing the prashadam is beneficial, but if you add the holy name, obviously there was a great amount of chances for for purification for, for those who come in contact and attraction at the same time. So. Um, this, we can't say that there's no benefit in prashadam distribution. There is. But the person who's saying that is saying, well, we should be doing more than just prashadam distribution. We should be also distributing prashadam and, and distributing the holy name together. Just like there's the devotees who go out on book distribution and there's devotees who go out and book distribution along with the Hari Nam party. Devotees who go out with book distribution along with the Hari Nam party always have much big, bigger results in their book distribution because the people are there and they're also surrounded by the holy name when they're being approached with books. 
And we find from practical experience that this is more effective. So in the same way, you can also apply that to prashadam distribution. But prashadam distribution in, a, it is, in and of itself is very effective as it, it, it gradually purifies the mind and gradually awakens uh, an attraction for association of devotees. Hare Krishna Mataji, uh, Nashingrila Mataji, I hope that's okay. Yeah, she is saying, yes, Guru Maharaj. So, uh, Sri Devi Mataji, you have raised your hand, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Please accept my humble obeisances, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you for elaborating on this verse. I'm uh, still thinking about the three kinds of pious uh, activities, and I'm thinking, what are the kinds of activities that would divert one to gain material opulence or merge into Brahman effulgence because we don't want those things for ourselves or for anyone. So how is it that the living entity uh, performs certain pious acts and bhakti arises, but which kind of pious activities will lead to the other two uh, kinds of opulence? It doesn't mention in this verse, and it gives the general category of pious activities. But then again, there is the intention, the intention of the activity. So people perform pious activities in order to get a better material position. People perform pious activities to become eligible for liberation. Hmm. So it's their intention. It's not so much the activity. Mm -hmm. But we did mention just now in the lecture that unknown uh, Agnyata Sukriti also happens when the person doesn't even know that they have helped a pure devotee and they get the benefit of associate, of uh, having rendered service to that devotee and they come closer and closer to Krishna consciousness. That's devotional service, but it's unknowingly being executed. So hmm. they do something... They do something and it appears to be something that they ordinarily do. I use the example. Uh, but because they've done it in connection with Krishna or his pure devotee, that's devotional service. That's called agyata sukriti. Agyata means unknowingly performing pious activities. But it has the element of devotional service in it. So that leads to devotional service. That's bhakti unmukha sukriti. And so when one performs pious activities with the desire to please the Lord, then one will come closer to bhakti rather than trying to gain some material opulence. Is to please true? the Lord, to please the Lord is the principle of bhakti. So pious activities are performed in that way, yes. It will fur if it'll further situate one in a position where they can again render devotional service. Hmm. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Guru. Hmm. Thank you. Raju Vilasini, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance to your lotus feet. All glories to Shri Prabhupada and glories to you, Guru Maharaj. So, Maharaj, I, Guru Maharaj, I have a question about regarding the prasadam. So, prasad, like, uh, at, example is like at my work, when we have a potluck, and when potluck, we take, everyone's take some prasad at work. So, I take the prasad like as rice or something and take it over there, but they're mixing with the other things. So is still that prasadam is going to get benefit to them or yeah. not? Yeah, prasadam, prasadam cannot be contaminated. Prasadam, can, prasadam cannot be changed. Sometimes even they say that 
if a materialistic takes material person takes prashadam and he leaves some of the prashadam and you take that, you still benefit because it's still prashadam. <laughs> so yeah, prashadam, even if it's mixed with other food, it's, it still has its effect. And that's also a tactic that sometimes um, like the husband really, there was one devotee in, uh, in Croatia. It was in Rijeka. And so his daughter was really Krishna conscious, so was his mother, so his wife was. But he, he didn't like Krishna consciousness and he didn't want anybody to give him prasadam. So they would cook for him and then they would mix the prasadam in with it. With it. So in that way, he, he was getting prasadam gradually. Even with the non-veg, non-vegetarian sped up prasadam still? Prasadam cannot be contaminated. It's contaminated. Krishna himself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we used, to, we used to cook for these um, uh, soup kitchens when I was in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was running a preaching center and we would, these soup kitchens, which are places where these people who are homeless, they come for food every day. So we would, uh, we would cook, we usually cook kitchri or some kind of vegetable stew or something like that. And then we would send it, we'd offer it, it would be prashadam. And then they'd, they'd mix it in there with their meat and whatever else they put. They would put garlic in it because we never used garlic, so they wanted garlic. But they're still getting prashad. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Prashadam is Krishna. <laughs> Can't be contaminated. <laughs> I can <laughs> remember that. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna Raj and, Prabhu. Yeah, Sorry. if you have a husband that's a demon, just cook some prasadam and, uh, <laughs> and then mix it in with, you know, maybe something he likes <laughs> that he insists on. It works. Prashadam, we, we always say that the holy name is our our main weapon and our prashadam is our secret weapon. The weapon the weapon is working, but it's working in a secret way. That's prashadam. And everybody likes to eat, so. Yeah, continue with that. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mr. Raj. Hare, Hare Krishna Raj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I have a question. You were talking earlier about doubts. And when you're talking about doubts, it sounded to me like the anybody that has a doubt, that doubt in theory that should be able to be corrected because it sounds like somebody does not have sufficient knowledge in something which is the reason for the doubt. They've heard something, seen something, witnessed something, and they, they think it's contradictory or for whatever reason they have a doubt but it sounds like if they ask if they ask uh, an intelligent person that would be able to explain and clarify for them then that doubt should be removed is that the case or have I misunderstood yeah but if they don't then they keep their doubts and as the verse says, there's, they're, they're pretty much lost. <laughs> but if they want their doubts removed and they go to the right source, fine. And they're willing to accept 
what has been given. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna, Bridge Vilasani Mataji, do you still have one more question? You guys still see your hands raised? No, I see. Okay, still no, that's fine. Hand, I got it. The little hand is still up, that's all. <laughs> so, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, while devotee asked this question, I think I would like to share this point about Prashadam Guru Maharaj, uh, the real examples which I have seen in temple and in surrounding that how Prashadam made uh, completely new people who were not having any awareness about Krishna consciousness. They were having non veg and all things in like one family or in fact two family used to come. They used to say my children are grown up. They can't even think of veg prashadam, forget about being devotee. And uh, in temple they always used to say please just take prashadam after this and give it to them. Little prashadam, please keep giving. She used to keep giving and now not only Mataji, Prabhuji are initiated, and uh, but their children are also initiated, and both family like having the same. So, and I have seen the same in my never with my never, uh, just giving little little prashadam. It has made very different uh, in their consciousness. So it's a I think very powerful thing for anybody uh, just to have the prashadam. Mm -hmm. In one uh, room conversation in Mexico. Srila Prabhupada was sitting with a small group of devotees and uh, he was talking about the benefits of prashadam. And at one point he uh, turned to each and every devotee and he asked them, you know, what brought you to Krishna consciousness? And most of them said prashadam. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. If you have any questions, comments, you can unmute yourself now or you can type in chat window. Thank you. The ladies can get use this opportunity to uh, spread Krishna consciousness. For Christmas time, you can maybe make a bunch of cookies or some pastries, cakes or something in large number and distribute it. You can, you can even put, make it like Christmas decorations or something, a Christmas cookie, but it's prashadam. Something like that. Well, it's a nice way to, uh, you might think, well, what can I do? This is one way. Raj Prabhu, you have raised your hand again. Uh, do you have any other question, please? Uh, if I may, yes, thank you. Sure, Prabhu, please go ahead. All right, you're talking about, you gave various examples about how if somebody somehow came across a devotee and say they took prashad or say they unknowingly served and pleased a pure devotee. And my question is like, do these things really happen by chance or is there always a reason why they came across that devotee because of something that happened previously. Yeah. Wherever there's an effect, there is a cause. Okay. Yeah. Prabhupada was talking about that. He says there is no effect without a cause, even though the cause might not be known, still there is a cause. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Okay. 
but sometimes the cause is in previous lives. So there's no connect, one cannot make the connection. Anyone else? Sri Devi Mataji has raised Guru Maharaj her hand. So Mataji, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I am still thinking about the pious activities. Uh, so what are the kinds of pious activities that we can encourage in others so that they come closer to bhakti? Um, again, buying a book, giving a donation. Like at the Sunday feast in in um, Croatia this last weekend, what we did was the temple president said, uh, "We're doing a Christmas marathon, so you should talk about all right book distribution." So that was the topic, and he said, "He said a previous devotee he sold twenty books during the Sunday feast lecture." So I want you to sell more on your lecture. <laughs> <laughs> Valentina was there, right? She was there. So she, she heard the class. I think, uh, what's her name? Uh, Shringalila, she was also there. So, you know, I'm, I'm not really planning how to do it. And it's mostly this guests. There's a couple of guests there, and mostly all the devotees. And they're glad there was it was a good crowd. It was 30, 40 people or more, actually more than 40. It was a, it was a real good turnout. So I went, I just said, well, it's Christmas season and Christmas. And so uh, we all have people who are near and dear to us. So can you think of some people you would like to give a nice gift to? And uh, everyone, people kind of nodded in affirmation. And I said, okay, all right. So how many of you would like to get, give a Bhagavad Gita to your close friend or somebody you know, or someone you want to benedict? And the hands went up. And right during, then we just distributed, I don't know, more than 20 Bhagavad Gitas. And then we asked for donations too. <laughs> Ivana was there too, I think, right? No, you weren't there? Okay, I know Valentina was there. Did you buy a book? Yeah, yeah she bought one. <laughs> so yeah, so, um, so Krishna kind of gave me a little bit of a hint what to do, so I took advantage of it. And more than, and I beat the 20 books from the previous <laughs> by Krishna's arrangement, of course. Nothing, nothing of my credit, but and I didn't know how, how I was gonna do it. I had no idea. But as I was talking, then the thought came up. As Krishna says, I am I am remembrance, forgetfulness, and knowledge so what, what's the difference between pious activity leading to devotional service and acts of devotional service um well uh pious activities leading to devotional service uh, can be performed by anyone but activities in devotional service are under the guidance of authorities. Mm. Mm. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for that clarification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Krishna Sudha Mataji, uh, you have raised your hand. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, Guruji, thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, uh, Tanu Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Sula Prabhupada. Thank you Guru Maharaj for this very nice class. Um, Guru Maharaj, my question is about like a pious activity and transcendental activity. 
so uh, so what is the main difference like uh, so just my understanding I'm not sure if it's right uh, so being doing a pious activity again it's like a mode of goodness it's a material mode but still um, doing it for devotional service so is it still considered transcendental like i'm just trying to understand the difference um, between the pious activity and transcendental well, there's pious activities that lead to devotional service, but devotional service is not, it's not pious activities, it's transcendental activities. Because pious activities bring good material to results, whereas transcendental activities bring no material results. They just purify the consciousness and bring one closer to Krishna. Okay, okay. So pious activity like uh, we do it for out of material gain so it's still considered pious activity like anything we still do pious but it's we are looking for some results then then that's the other pious activities that's bogan mukti muk, mukta sukriti pious activities that are leading to material gain that's not devotional service Prabhupada mentions that in the purport. He said these are not good, they don't lead to one's good fortune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Guru Maharaj, like uh, anything like we do pious activities, uh, like uh, giving um, books uh, and uh, distribution prasadam, all these are considered pious activities because it's leading to transcendental, it's leading to devotional service. Uh -huh. But any no, these, are these are acts of devotion. They're not pious activities. Giving okay. out books and distributing prasadam is, is, is bhakti. Okay. okay. So donating to hospitals and doing for good cause, those are pious activities. Just I'm trying to understand. Like... Uh, well, the activity is is in the mode of goodness, but when it's the one done in devotional service, it's suicide, it's transcendental goodness. It's the consciousness, it's the intention behind the activity that makes it either pious or, or devotional. If you're working under the guidance of a spiritual master, any activity you perform is devotional service. If you're not working under the guidance of a spiritual master, but you want to do good to someone in one form or another and you perform some activity and that activity is in the mode of goodness then that's that's pious activity okay okay mm -hmm. pious impious and mixed pious and impious are, are, are within the three categories of the modes of material nature devotional service is transcendental Devotional service is meant to please Krishna or in relationship to the instructions of the spiritual master, mm -hmm. which is meant to please Krishna also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. So, uh, so Gurmash, when we do the pious activities, um, uh, uh, for like your devotional service, leading to devotional service, Still, we have these other modes, uh, passion and ignorance. Is that like, uh, can we have still those modes? Because sometimes we do pious activities, we do book distribution, but still we have like other modes too. We're battling with uh, uh, passion and ignorance. Um, well, then the activity is not pure. It's a, it's a mixture, that's all. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When these other modes are, when the characteristics of the other modes are mixed into the activity, then it's a mixed activity. It's not a pure activity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, consciousness uh, ultimately it should be pure when an act. But the intention should be pure. The consciousness may not be pure. The intention should be pure. Intention should be. Pure. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. you, anybody, anyone can acqu acquiesce pure intention. I want to please Krishna. Okay, let me do something in that regard. Mm -hmm. 
I want to do something to further preaching in the world. So let me do something. So in other words, the intention and the direction that intention is in makes it either pious, material, or transcendental. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rupa Goswami gives it. For Krishna, with a desire to please Krishna, that's devotional service. Mm -hmm. And if you follow the instructions of the spiritual master, then his instructions are, are connected with pleasing Krishna. So that's devotional service. If you're not working under the guidance of the spiritual master and you do some pious activity, and those pious activities are not intended for anything but the results of some good for good good work, that can lead to devotional service. But if it's motivated by mukti and bhukti, material mm -hmm. desires and uh, gain, then it's then it's uh, pious activities that lead to better material situations. That's all. Okay, much. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Raj. So intention is important. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. I see Shidri Mataji has raised her hand. Maybe we can take this as a last question because it's now close to an hour. Can we take this question, Guru Maharaj? Yeah. Shri Mataji. So, yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you, Prabhu. Uh, just one last question, Guru Maharaj. What's the difference between karma mishra bhakti and pious activities wherein we are looking for material opulence? One's material and the other one is mixed spiritual. That's all. Karma Mishra Bhakti means Bhakti is mentioned. Mishra means mixed. And uh, the other one is simply, you know, pious activities and immortal goodness. That's all. Mm. Mm. Yes, Guru Maya. Thank you. Yeah, it's easy. If you give in charity to to uh, <coughs> a person in need, that might be a pious activity. If you give money to Krishna for furthering on devotional service, that's devotional service. Mm Okay. So Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, we don't have any further questions. Okay. Alita Tangi, are you still there? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Sangha Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj, yeah. for your very, very wonderful class. Uh, yeah, we all, you always give us uh, some food for thought. So like cows, we can bring it back again and chew again throughout the day. <laughs> I see you're in good association. Uh, right. Gurnit, Gurnit Thai is right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by your mercy. Yeah. We, we hear, we try to understand, and then we see how we can use it to further our Krishna consciousness. If we hear, that's beneficial. If we think about what we hear and we see how it applies to us, that's more beneficial. And when we actually make the effort to apply it, in our day-to-day -day life, that's even more beneficial.
And when we successfully apply it and get the result, that's even more beneficial. Yeah. And when we successfully apply it and get the result, then it leads to the characteristics of pure devotional service. And that is perfection. In other words, we develop transcendental qualities. <laughs> Wonderful, Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. Something to think about. Right. <laughs> There's those of us who turn on, turn on the screen and we listen and then when it's over, we forget everything. <laughs> and then there's others that might remember one thing. And if we ask the question, we usually remember more because it has to, it directly related to us. So therefore we always encourage questions. And if we tell someone else about what we heard, then it's even more beneficial. <laughs> yeah, it makes very much sense, Maharaj. <laughs> I got all of these ideas just because you came on. Oh, Krishna. <laughs> this is the uh, epitome of uh, humility. Really? We are, uh, think... Yeah, it's so nice. I didn't think of any of this until you came on. So something happened. <laughs> yeah, because I've not, I've been hearing for long and I'm not uh, yet practicing it. So Krishna, maybe... I mean, inspired you to talk to me about it so that I can at least start before it's too late. It's not too late. <laughs> In fact, it's pretty early where you are. It's late where I am. <laughs> okay, so we'll see you all tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, we'll continue with this chapter. Um, I'm finding it interesting. I hope the devotees are finding it interesting also. You can always send your comments or, uh, you know, disagreements <laughs> or whatever to. Uh, to the conference and this let us know whether we're on track or not. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Anand Koti Vaishnav Brand ki jai. So we will continue tomorrow with Shri Chaitanya Charita Mitha, uh, Madhya Leela, uh, verse 46 onwards. 46. Okay, Hare Krishna. Please have a wonderful day if it's just beginning and have a wonderful evening if it's at that time of the day. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Take care. Hare Krishna. The Namrata will say good night. <laughs> yes, that was exactly thinking it's right to end for me. <laughs> but no worries, I'll keep it. You're more, you're way ahead of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> we can sleep with this uh, transcendental thoughts, Maharaj. Some people are ready to cook lunch and others are ready to eat lunch, evening meal and some are ready to go to sleep. <laughs> Manjuali, are you home or are you still in Switzerland? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. No, I'm at Switzerland at the working place. Oh, it's like okay. this, you know, and this is my, <laughs> this is the picture oh, from the <laughs>
They're only she made that picture, huh? Yeah, yeah, Taruni Radha. You want to see a picture that Taruni made? Check, check yeah. this one out. Yeah. yeah, I'll show you this one. This is Taruni here. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Beautiful, huh? yeah. yeah. I keep it on my desk. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. Yeah, really nice. She's a natural artist. Mm hmm not a dentist yet. <laughs> <laughs> she will get there. Yeah, she's. If she gets some instructions from you, then she'll. It'll help push her along. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Mm -hmm.